Welcome to Submission Management for Library Publishers, our webinar with um, J.R. Plate from Submittable. Um, and just a little bit about J.R. Uh, he joined Submittable just over two years ago as their fifth full-time employee. The last two years, he says, have been incredible watching Submittable, Submittable grow and help organizations we work with save valuable time, energy, and in most, most cases, money by streamlining their submission or application process. Submittable now has 20 full-time employees and 9,000 plus customers. We continue to grow on all fronts and are excited about the direction our software platform is headed. Um, so welcome, um, and let me just, so our agenda for today, um, we will do a, a, about a 20 minute demo of, of uh, Submittable, followed by a Q&A with JR, so any questions you have about the demo or about the product. Um, and then we'll have a, a, the rest of the hour devoted to a discussion about how you are managing submissions at, at, in your publishing programs. Um, and you can, so during the Q&A and the interactive discussion portion of the webinar, please feel free to submit questions or comments via the chat box at the bottom there. I'll also during those portions um, unmute people or you can unmute yourselves if you're in the um, if you're in the web interface. Um, you'll notice right now that you're muted just to keep background noise down. So uh, thanks for joining us and uh, JR, please uh, I'll hand it over to you. All right, great. Thanks so much, Sarah. Um, let's see. Let me just get my screen shared. There we go. <clears throat> Excellent. Well, I just want to thank everybody for taking some time this afternoon to join us on this webinar. Uh, as Sarah had mentioned, my name is J.R. Plates, and I work here at Submittable. And over the next 20 minutes or so, <clears throat> what I'm going to be doing is demonstrating our software platform and how publishers like yourselves are using the platform to accept, review, manage, and curate content. So the way we're going to run through the software is if you look in the upper right-hand portion of your screen, I'm going to enlarge my screen a little bit. We can notice that there's three tabs, submissions, categories, and more. So where we're at right now is this is the administrative side of Submittable, where you can set up your submission forms, build workflow around them, and then ultimately this is the space where submissions would come into the system. You can then assign them to other reviewers of that content um, or execute any other workflow or review process that you would have in place. So we're going to essentially walk through the platform in three sections uh, based on these buttons you see in the upper right hand corner here, submissions, categories, and more. So the first area we're going to go is categories. So when we come to our categories page, what we're seeing on our screen right now is what we call a list view. So we have currently two categories within the platform. Uh, I made a very generic category for today's demo called written submissions. And then I also made a second category, which is mimicking a current application submission process that LPC is executing that I saw on their website, it's just to give another uh, point of reference of how the software could be used. So everything we're seeing right now is very high level information, nothing too detailed about our category. So we're going to go ahead and click into this first um, category, written submissions, and show you what that setup and customization process is like. And just so everyone is clear, um, the term category is a term that we use at Submittable. And essentially, a category is a custom online form that you get to build and create, which we're about to walk through now. Uh, you can also request files to be uploaded into that form, such as uh, PDFs, Word files, photo files, video files, pretty much any file type. And then you get to build a workflow around that form so that as your submitters are filling it out, uploading files, and then submitting them to you, you have specific workflow in, in place for uh, either the assignment process so other people have access to these submissions for review, or um, a specific management and review process that you might have in place. So over the next few minutes here, we are going to walk through the four tabs that you see on this blue bar on the top of the screen. So these are the four areas that you would walk through and customize to fully build out your category. So to start out in here in the general settings space, uh, the first field you see is the name of your category. So this would ultimately be the name of your submission or application process. Um, I chose something very generic and nondescript for today's demo. You, you might have something a little bit more specific such as uh, the, the, the title of a, a writing uh, prize or competition or, or some other submission process that you currently execute. 
Uh, the next field below that is your, your guidelines field. The guidelines field is a great place for you to put any information that you want your submitter or applicant to understand before they start filling out that customized form um, so that you can prompt them maybe with any rules or specifics that you want them to understand uh, before they start filling out the form. So you can see right now I put a, uh, an example in here, the work you are submitting cannot have been previously published. So that might be some sort of piece of information that you would want to prompt your submitter with. As we scroll further down the page, uh, the second, uh, or the third option, I'm sorry, is your pricing feature. So the pricing feature would only be used if you're charging some sort of application or submission fee. Um, we understand most organizations don't charge a fee, but if, if you do have some sort of fee associated uh, with the submission process, it's very simple to implement. implement. You're simply going to click on the Add Fee Option button. You get a little pop-up window uh, on your screen. You, you write in the fee amount. Uh, the system will do a quick little calculation uh, because we do take a per transaction fee to cover our costs for providing this service. And then you get to see what you would, um, what you would gross uh, from each submission. So I will go ahead and cancel this because we're not going to add a fee today. The next two fields that we see here are starts on and expires on dates. Uh, these fields are optional. You do not have to use them, but what they allow you to do is you can put a specific date range into these fields. And what will happen uh, once this date range becomes uh, current, your, your online form will go live on your submittable landing page, and we're going to take a, a peek at what that landing page looks like here in a moment. And then it would ultimately expire uh, at midnight of the expiration date and no longer accept submissions or applications. Uh, one side note, you can change these dates on, a plot on the fly. So let's say your expiration date is tonight at midnight, but you want to extend the submission period by a couple of days, you could just log back in, update the expiration date to the appropriate day you want to um, change it to, and your submission process would keep going. The next feature and field that we have is what we call hidden, and it's simply a checkbox. And what this feature allows you to do is if you were to check this box, uh, you would be creating a fully functioning category and online form that will accept submissions. However, you're going to be hiding this form from your public landing page that exists within your submittable account. Uh, so we're going to see that public landing page here in a moment. But to give a little context in terms of why an organization would want to hide the category from their public facing landing page, is oftentimes we have organizations who like to do a, submit, a solicited submission process. So they want to control access into the category um, in terms of their submitters. So you would then share the direct link that exists for the category via email with those folks who you want to offer access into that category. And that way you now can control access into, the, into that online forum and category. Final feature is our live checkbox, and that's simply just telling you um, if this box is checked, your category is ready to go and accept submissions. So from here, we'll scroll back up and we will click on the form designer, the second tab. And the form designer, this is your form building tool. This is where you get to build your custom online form for the submitter to fill out. And the way that it works is as follows. You have a variety of field types over on the right-hand side in the toolbox. And the form that you're building is right here in the middle of the screen. And to add on to this field, you simply just drag over a field from the toolbox you drop it in, and now it's fully editable, and you can turn it into a question or a prompt for information. So I will just make this a very uh, basic general question. Uh, you can then make some decisions such as, do you want to make this um, field required in terms of it being filled out? And we also offer a blind review feature. Um, so we won't go into that too heavily today because it is a pretty advanced feature. But just to let everyone know, if you do a blind review or an anonymous review process, we have the ability to um, help you execute that within Submittable. So we certainly won't go through all the field types that exist in the toolbox. Um, we would love to set up a one-on-one -on -one demo with anybody who's interested in seeing this more and having us set up an account for them to, to experiment with. But what I will do is I will open up the final field that I have in the form, which is our file upload field. And the reason why I like to demonstrate this is because I like to show all the different file types that we accept. So everything from static files like PDFs and Word docs and JPEGs, all the way up to dynamic files like video and audio files. And as everyone's going to see here in a moment, once you receive a submission from, from a submitter or applicant, um, you get to view these files directly within the submission. So there's no need to download files and take them out of the platform externally and, and try to view them elsewhere. 
uh, we give you a very simple, easy way to view all that content within each submission or application. So from here, we'll scroll up and we'll click on the third tab, Assignments and Notifications. So, so everything we just talked about in the first two tabs, General Settings and Form Designer, this is all information and customization that will affect what your submitter or applicant sees on their side of the software. The final two tabs, Assignments and Notifications and Review Designer, have features and functionality that will affect workflow that you're building around this form so that as submissions come in, you can manage them and uh, do a review process that is um, necessary for you to make proper decisions. So here in the Assignments and Notifications tab, we can do things like execute that blind review process or anonymous review process. Uh, we can change some visibility um, features in terms of some note-taking fields that we offer for reviewers. Um, staff owners allow you to automatically assign submissions to people on your staff or in the account as submissions come in. And then just briefly here, the last two features, the choose an auto response the success URL, both of these features will affect what your submitter is going to experience once they press submit and, you, and send you that, that submission. And when they do that, um, essentially they will get an automated email sent to them which you can customize and they also will um, click over to a confirmation page that lets them know their submission has gone through successfully. So the final tab that we have in our categories um, process is the review designer. So this is another form building tool, just like we saw in the form designer. As you can see, um, there is a variety of field types in the toolbox, and then we're building a form over here in the middle of the page. Uh, the difference is, is this particular form would be a form that your reviewer would fill out and attach to each submission. So if you had a specific JR, I'm no longer process, hearing your audio. Is, is that is anyone else having that issue? Uh, can you hear me now? Hello? Can you got um, Sarah? Yeah. Okay. Now I can hear again. I, I guess that was okay. a problem on my end. Sorry about that. No problem. Um, I'm not sure where I dropped off, but just to quickly recap, the, the fourth tab that we're in right now is called the Review Designer, and this is another form building tool. And in, in short, it is a custom form that you get to make um, and build for the reviewers of your submissions to fill out. So if you have a specific scoring or review process, you can execute that process using this form building tool. Um, today we're not going to have this form on. Uh, we're going to just show you a very basic scoring and rating process within Submittable. So I'm going to go ahead and just save this category. Uh, we'll go ahead and return to that list uh, that we were starting that we started out at. And now I'm going to click over to a new tab uh, in my browser. And this tab is now the public landing page that I was speaking of for LPC's Submittable landing page. So what you would have done to get your submitter to this place right now is you would have copied and, and pasted a little snippet of code that we provide for you, um, and I'm going to click back over momentarily, that we provide for you at the bottom of the page, which creates this button, click here to submit, or you would have created your own button or link on your website, and then the submitter would redirect to your submittable landing page. When they come to this page, they can see any public categories that you have available right now accepting submissions or applications. So the written submissions was the category we were just looking at, so we would click Submit, and that would then reveal the form. So the next page we'll see here is the custom form we were just looking at. We would go ahead and we would fill it out. Test submission, I will put in a little bit of information here quickly. And we'll just say it's a fiction submission, and I will grab a Word document and quickly upload it. So that Word document has now been uploaded and I'm just going to click Submit. The system will process my submission and then I will get that confirmation page that I mentioned before and I would also have an email waiting in my inbox uh, confirming that everything went through okay. So now we're going to click back over to the administrative side of the LPC uh, submittable account and we're going to move over to the submissions page. So when we click over to the submissions page, uh, this is a dashboard of any submissions that have come into the account. Uh, the way I describe this, this screen is, is it's basically just like your inbox for email. So all your submissions will stack up on your screen. You can see a little bit of information, but you don't get to the ability to see the details of each of these submissions until you click into each one. Um, before we do that, I'm just going to mention 
uh, when I go ahead and choose one or multiple submissions here on this list view page, uh, we get access to a row of buttons here, which is a variety of different features. So these buttons allow us to do things like assign submissions to specific staff members within the account. Uh, we can add labels um, such as, these are all customized labels that you get to make. You can make up to about 100 of them. And these labels not only act as, you know, these forward-facing notations you see here, but you can also search out and filter out all the, all the submissions you want to see based on these labels uh, using this search filter you see here at the top. Uh, the remainder of these buttons are things like status changes. So if you want to accept or decline submissions, you can do so. Uh, when you click this button, you will get the opportunity to send a templated message to your submitter. So here's an example of that templated message you're seeing here, letting them know congratulations, we're accepting your work, um, here are next steps in terms of the publishing process or curation process. Uh, you can do the opposite like decline. We also have the ability for you to open submissions back up for editing and a few other tools here such as an email tool and an archive folder. I had briefly mentioned that we have a, uh, a show, a search filter, so I'm going to quickly click the show search filters button at the top, and these are all the different ways you could filter out and search out uh, submissions. So I could say, show me all the submissions I received this month uh, that have the label um, fiction applied to it. So then I could go ahead and filter my results, and I would see all those submissions just with my fiction label applied. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that filter. So what we'll do now is we're actually going to click into a submission, and I'm going to click into the second one, a Latin manuscript in Latin. And this will take us into the detail view uh, where the reviewer or staff member for this account can actually see the details of the submission itself. The first page that we come to is what we call our summary view. So this is a summary of that entire custom form that you created and had filled out. And then as we can see at the bottom of the page, we have two files that were uploaded into the submission. To view these files, we simply just click on the title. The system will transcode the document, and now we get to see the Word document on our screen. So as we can see, this is just a test document I had created with some Latin uh, text dropped in, uh, but you can imagine this being a manuscript or some other piece of writing. We can also toggle to additional uh, files by using these black arrows on either side of a file. And this is just a simple example of what a photo file looks like when it's been uploaded. Off to the right, um, we can see what we call our activity feed um, feature. So this activity feed is, is tracking all the actions that have been taken uh, on this particular submission. So for example, we can see emails that have been sent to the submitter, uh, status changes, who's been assigned to this submission, um, any notes that they're taking. So the note taking space you see at the top, Should I take a note and add it, it would then be visible down below um, in this activity feed, and we could also choose to filter out these actions based on uh, these different tabs you see here. Uh, the basic rating system that I mentioned earlier we were going to look at uh, is this simple thumbs up and thumbs down process. So it's a yes, no, and maybe. And whatever, whatever the reviewer chooses um, of these three options, a point is associated, a point system is associated with each response. So a yes or a thumbs up is a plus one point, a maybe would be a zero points, a thumbs down would be minus one point, and if you had multiple reviewers reviewing the same submission, uh, the system will then aggregate these points so that when we go back to our list view, uh, we can see what types of votes each submission has received. So that's a, a quick look at the submission portion of, of Submittable. Um, I've got about four minutes here before uh, the 20-minute time frame has elapsed. So I'm going to show you a couple administrative features that exist within the system as well. And the way that we get to those administrative features is, is through the More tab in the upper right. So when I click on More, uh, it reveals a little drop-down menu. And we're going to go ahead and look at the second option, which is Staff. So our staff page shows us all the staff and reviewers that are in the accounts currently. Um, right now, I am the only staff member. Uh, when you add additional staff into the accounts, all you need is their email address. And then you need to look over here on the right at this permissions legend 
and decide what permission level you're going to assign to them. So just real quickly, a level five is the highest level. This would be your top end administrator who can see and do everything within the account. And your level one at the bottom, this is your most basic reviewer. Uh, when they log in, they would only be able to view, um, comment, and rate the submissions that have been assigned to them. Uh, they wouldn't be able to accept or decline or interact with that submitter in any way, shape, or form. From here, I'll go back up to our More tab, and I will go down to our Reports option. So there's quite a few reports that we can run. I'm going to go ahead and update this one. The first report we're looking at is called a Statistics Report, and this is essentially a dashboard of your submission information. So this shows you how many submissions you've received over a period of time, uh, what status they're in, uh, what categories we're looking at, and then who these submissions have been assigned to. Another handy report that we have is our progress report. And I'm not sure if this is going to show us any data right now, but what this would show if we had a fully functioning account here with uh, dozens of submissions and in, in the review process happening, is it would li list all your staff and your re reviewers, and it would show how many submissions have been assigned to each person, and of that total number, how many have been reviewed, under the finish column or not reviewed and scored. So this way you can kind of keep track of the progress your reviewer, your review staff is, is, is making on the submissions that have been assigned to them. I will show one, one last feature, because uh, I know we're getting to the end of the 20 minute time slot and I want to leave some time for questions and answers. So I'll show you the configuration space real quickly. And two great features that we have are response templates. So this is a place where you can make customized email messages. Uh, so that you don't have to type one-off messages when you're, when you're reaching out to your submitters, uh, which will save you a, a lot of time. And the other feature is your look and feel uh, feature. So I'm sure as you noticed when we were looking at the landing page for this particular submittable account, there was a logo involved. Um, there was some color, coloring on the page that matched the logo. Um, I accomplished all this um, customization using the simple look and feel tool. And the reason why we encourage people to use this tool is because when your submitter clicks over from your website to your submittable page, we want them to feel like they're in a familiar place, um, like a back-end page to your website and not necessarily some foreign place on the Internet. So that is a 20-minute uh, overview of Submittable. Um, I would say that's probably 70% of the features or so that are available within Submittable. And if there are any questions about anything I discussed or went over or things that I did not discuss or go over, I, I would be happy to entertain any of those questions. Feel free to um, submit any questions through the chat window, and uh, do remember to unmute yourself um, if you want to ask a question over the, the microphone. Um, JR, I have, a, I have a quick question. So um, in terms of um, uh, if using this, for example, for journals um, and uh, that, that might have a um, large number of peer reviewers that, that may be occasionally called on, what's the onboarding process like for new, for reviewers who might be assigned at that like level one or two? Um, uh, sure. might, so, yeah. So just in terms of getting them into the system? Yeah. Yep, so all you would do is you would go to your staff page um, and I would click add a single member or you can add members in, in batch or bulk based on their permission level. So let's just say I was going to add you, Sarah. I would just click add, add member. I would uh, type in your email address. I'm just obviously making one up here. And then I would make sure I'm assigning the appropriate permission level to you, whatever that might be. And then I would send you the staff invitation. You receive an email. Uh, you click a link in that email to finish creating your account, and then you're automatically brought into this account to start the review process and looking over submissions that have been assigned to you. If you already are a reviewer for another organization that uses Submittable, uh, when you're added into a new account, there is no account set up. You'll just be sent a, an email um, saying, hey, you've been added to the Library Publishing Coalition Submittable account. Log in to access your submissions. And then what the reviewer would do is use this little button in the up, upper right-hand corner and you can see you have the ability to toggle in between multiple different accounts as a reviewer. So these are all different test accounts that I have personal access to.
on the right hand side. Great, thank you. Sure. Um, and another question came in through the chat. So um, does blind equal double blind and who can see what? So maybe if you could go through in a little more detail yep. that uh, blinding process. That's right. Um, great question. And the answer is yes, it's a double blind process. So I'm going to click back into the category we were just looking at. And I'm going to show you essentially how this feature sets up. So it's a two-step process. Uh, the first thing you would want to do is, is build your form and then you would systematically go through the form and say, all right, this particular field, um, I need to collect this information for internal purposes, but I want to hide it from my reviewers. So I'm going to click the blind checkbox. So once we've identified any individual fields within the form that we want to hide the information from reviewers, we then, um, we then do the second step, which is located in assignments and notifications. And what we do here is we use the blind level drop down, the very first feature, and we, and we now pick and choose based on permission levels that we were just looking at in the staff page, who can and cannot see that blind information. So let's say your reviewers are all at levels one and two, and you don't want them to see that blind information. You would then click level two, and that means levels two and below would not be privy to any blind information. And just to be clear, blind information obviously includes those fields within your form that you've checked the box for, and the system will also automatically hide the first name, the last name, and the email address of the submitter to the reviewers because that data is automatically captured um, because each submittable um, submitter has to create an account, um, including their first name, last name, and email. So that, that information automatically gets passed over. I hope that was a, uh, a clear enough explanation. I know the blind process is a little bit more in depth, but um, once you've done it a time or two, it's pretty easy to set up. Um, I have another question, JR, about the data that um, that's collected. Is there a way to um, to export data, like um, you know the the names and contact information of of people who've submitted or other uh, things like that? Sure. that? Not necessarily everything, but um, yeah. yeah. Great question. And there absolutely is ways to, to export data. So the, the short answer to that question is any and all data that you generate within your submittable account can be exported. And it can be exported in, in, in a multitude of ways. Um, speaking about specifically uh, submission data, so here I'm back on the submissions dashboard. And if we look to the right um, where my cursor is, you're going to see a little gear or cog icon. So when I click that, the second option is export data. And this little export tool allows us to do a very focused or, or filtered uh, export of information. So we can either export submission data or submitter data. Submission data will be all that form data you've collected. Submitter data will be contact information. And then you can work your way down this little tool, um, customizing it to pull out exactly what you're looking for. And then all that data would come out into a CSV slash Excel spreadsheet. And then you could use it to upload into a third-party piece of software or another database somewhere else. Great, thank you. Sure. Um, another question from the, the chat, is there a way to capture editorial decision data like accept, reject rate, and run reports? Uh, yes, absolutely. So uh, I briefly touched on our reports uh, area, so I'll click back over there. So we're going to go up to our More tab in the upper right. We're going to choose Reports from the dropdown. And so the first, the first report we see is, is called our, our statistics report. So right now it's pretty plain because we only have two submissions within the system. But you, what you would do is you would filter by your submission process, which in this case would be a category. So we'll just do Written Submissions. Uh, you would do a customized date range. And then once you do that, so I'm doing a, a, a category or a, a report for this particular category, I can automatically see down below, based on status, that 50% of my submissions for this category were accepted. So as you take these actions on submissions, accepting, declining, so on and so forth, all that data would be recorded here. And you could then run a report and say, oh, the submission process that we did earlier this summer had a 12.5% a acceptance rate. 
and uh, uh, an 80 an 81 and a half percent um, decline rate. Um, and another question, I see that you can, but wonder if folks do actually collect multimedia submissions apart from text, that is, do film departments, say, accept film submissions thus? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So we work with um, probably at least 500 uh, film-specific uh, clients. So we work with everybody from large film festivals like National International Film Festival and Chicago International Film Festival down to smaller film clients. Uh, we also branch out into um, working with corporate clients that use us to accept film files. For example, the Rachel Ray Show uses us to accept um, two-minute video submissions from their viewership. So the answer to that is yes. We, we, we have a lot of um, organizations and clients that use us specifically for multimedia, such as video. And just so everyone's aware, when we accept um, video files within Submittable, those video files are playable within the submission. So you'll see the video on your screen, you press play, and there's no need to download or export those files um, into a third-party piece of software for viewing. Great. And a couple of follow-up questions on that. Do the files go through some kind of scrubber for malware, and are there file size limits? Um, so in terms of uh, a file scrubber uh, to look for malware, we, we don't have anything uh, in place uh, specifically, but we do, we do uh, when, the, when the files come in, they do get checked um, for uh, corruption, and if they're corrupted, you'll see the file, but we just won't present anything to you. Uh, you'll be able to instantly understand that the file was not a good file. Um, in terms of file size limits, so we don't price our software based on file size limits or data storage. Um, we kind of feel that that's an antiquated way of pricing software, since now storage is so cheap. Um, however, we do have some default limits on individual files in, in the entire submission worth of files. And those default limits are as follows. Um, it's 400 megabytes per file and then 800 megabytes for the entire submission. That being said, those are just default limits and we can increase that to whatever you need. Um, for example, for our film festival clients, they need much more um, much larger file size limits than that. So we'll often increase their file size limit to, you know, five or six gigabytes to accommodate large, large film files. Um, so a follow-up question to that, uh, how do you price the software? That's a good question. So the way we price our software is based on the number of staff seats that you need within the account. Uh, the number of submissions you anticipate getting on a, on a monthly basis, and then what feature set um, works best for you. Uh, we do have a couple off-the-shelf plans that are pre-priced, and those range from as low as $29 a month all the way up to a couple hundred dollars a month, and they have a, a varying amount of features and staff seats within each. And then we also, uh, over the last six months, we, we added the ability for clients to re request a custom quote and the reason being is we found a lot of clients looked at these off-the-shelf plans, said, I like what this one has, but I need a couple more things. How can we add that in? So what we decided to do is by doing a custom quote, we can evaluate what features you need, how many staff seats you need, what your submission, is gonna, submission count is going to be like, and then we'll create a custom quote based on those criteria so that ultimately you're paying for everything you need and nothing you don't. Great. Um, switching gears a little bit, what happens after the reject slash accept decision is made? Does the specific info disappear except for aggregation and reports, or can you go back and review past individual submissions? Great question. Um, so we will never touch data within your account. Um, so even after you do the accept reject um, process, uh, those submissions will live in your account. Um, even, if, even if you archive, so I'll quickly archive this first submission uh, by using our black archive folder on the, on the right here. So this submission is going to disappear off my main screen, but it doesn't mean it no longer exists in my account. 
um, what will happen is uh, I can use my Show Search Filters feature, and I can then look at my archive submissions. And then those, those, those submissions will reappear. Um, we, we, we've processed upwards of about 7 million submissions currently through our platform, and we've never touched or deleted a single piece of data. Every file and every form that's been filled out is still existing in everyone's account who, who works with Submittable.